Welcome to Mindful Drawing. I'm Rooks is Fun, and I'll be your guide on this journey through a space of mindfulness and the act of drawing. This week, I thought we'd look at a subject of unbounding our perspective. Kind of literally, here on the drawing page, we'll uh, construct some very loose two-point perspectives, a horizon, a height, some vanishing lines, and form coming in between those, but we'll let them be free on the page, unbound to the horizontal, each a local condition, unique, a place to enter our breath, exercise the different motions and movements we have available to our hands, draw in many directions, many ways, explore what that does to the hand, to the arm, to our agility, bring it really into practice as something we'll develop through the act of drawing. What we'll end up with on the page is a collection of tumbling, moving simulations of something that looks kind of 3D for its space and maybe kind of weird relative to all its neighbors. But in the end, whether you know how to draw perspective or not, we're just drawing some lines, connecting some dots, and seeing if we can get something to emerge out of that by spending some time with the page, with the pencil, with our breath, with ourselves in this space we create for mindful practice. No special tools this week. I'm gonna use a pen, maybe a marker to give a little emphasis and highlight. Drawing on a pad of Bristol, sketchbook, notebook paper, printer paper, anything's fine. Whatever you can move that pen or pencil around on. So go ahead and gather your supplies, establish your space, and let's draw together. So we'll warm up for that in terms of general technique. What we'll look at doing is drawing some generally straight lines. That line can be in whatever orientation we like. And from its establishment on the page, we can use it to generate some uh, simulation of perspective. If we cross that line, generally perpendicular, and then bring the points back towards the end, making a little kind of kite shape there. We have the setup we need for a little simple two-point perspective. And if we use that to draw around and make a little box, it's something that starts to look 3D. Maybe give it just a little shading with a pen or pencil on one side and now it has some difference so that is a, a general starting place for the technique some things within it as we draw and we can establish that line anywhere with different degrees of intensity heavy with a lot of like consistent pressure with the pen maybe very light just letting it drag across could use pencil and combine them. I think I'll just stick with this pen for the exercise. And they can go off in any which direction we like. So we'll begin there. And the line that crosses can cross high to one side, can be off to the left or right, can be big or small, can be multiple. We can start to play with how that creates different configurations of the little kite shape. The big challenge for this as we're drawing will be this connecting of the dots. And I always lean back on, it's better to make a line that's a little bit wobbly but gets from the first point to the second point than make one that just misses entirely. So kind of wiggle your way across there, connect the dots, but how they connect doesn't have to be perfectly straight. And we'll have a bunch of those established around the page and, and see what kind of dimension emerges there. Taking in the larger sheet, have a sense of what the technique is, just a couple of perpendicular lines, a few converging lines, and some highlighting through different values of the pen or pencil. And we give the spine a bit of a twist to the left and the right. 
first one just feeling it out, the next one breathing in as you move to the left and out as you return to center, repeating on the right side into the right and out to center. And you're just turning the head into the left and out to center into the right and out to center. I like to do a little glide forward and back. So bring the neck back and let it glide forward. Just make sure that kind of chain of the spine is, is nice and engaged and warmed up for being focused on the page, which it's not always the most ergonomic condition. And then we'll take the open space of that paper, choose some place to draw a nice straightish line. That first demarcation of the paper, breaking the emptiness, beginning to give direction that our eyes will track and our hand can follow. And we'll use this first part, I think, as a nice entrance into the breath, with each one of these being a, nice, a discrete layer. So breathing in to establish a place for the pen. When you reach the top of your breath, let it out as the pen moves in another straight line. Just as long as the breath supports. Somewhere there on the page, if you have a small page, you may draw a little quicker or a little slower, depending on the length of the line. Breathing in again to fill out some space, finding a location and exhaling that line onto the paper. They can cross or remain free from each other. So each one, a new chance to breathe in, maybe close the eyes, let the pen find a spot and then exhale. that line into being. Find your pacing for the inhalation. How much do you hold at the top to really let the lungs take in some of that oxygen and then the exhalation. Tracking out there on the paper. We'll do a few of these until the density gets kind of full. Perhaps bringing attention with the breath and the exhalation. Also to the composition a little bit of where the pen might land next. Where are the spaces? of emptiness between the breaths to engage again. A loose collection, crossing or avoiding lines. Each one guided by one present moment, filling the space of the lungs with oxygen, letting that sink in to the bloodstream and then marking the space of the page with the exhalation. Do you begin to notice inconsistency with the marks or the breath perhaps is finding its place with a lot of variation? Just a recognizing what we see on the page as we guide with our breathing in to establish and out to project 
a mark into that space on the paper. Maybe a couple more breaths with a line or without, just to really establish that oxygenation, that center of awaken, of awakening of the mind, that center. of presence, one line, one breath, one action. But once we have a nice filling kind of density, we have plenty to work with. You can now begin to read through those lines, make a first pass of the crossing, the extension of a height from the horizon above and below. So as you let your eyes scan over the page, any line that draws you in, continuing the breath cycling, breathing in to establish, but now much more constrained, slower exhalation, crossing roughly perpendicular. Really bringing that breath cycle's attention to the movement of the pen or pencil on the paper. Honing in our awareness to the texture of the fibers. To the glide or resistance of the pen or graphite the ink flowing, the particles rubbing off. Perhaps in that space of subtlety, Noticing for ourselves variation in the speed. Do we pick up speed at the beginning? Slow. Lead into the line. Cross and accelerate a little at the end. Or is there a consistency we can bring to the breath? Training that connection between us, our guidance of the motion, the paper, its acceptance of the mark, and the instrument in between, bringing evenness with the breath. and ease with the expression through the line. Any one of these can have multiple crossings. You start to run out of space before we transition to another phase. You can always add more long horizons, more short crossings building up some density, exploring and experimenting with that connection of the breath, the mind, the page. Establishing something there without knowing exactly what it will produce letting it be a generative field on the paper. And all of that warm up for our hands, the warm up for drawing lines in relatively straight directions can now come in and help us build out those diminishing or vanishing lines, the kind of diamond kite shape from each one of these local relationships drawing out from the crossing lines, endpoints, 
to the extension of the horizon, we're drawing from the extension of the horizon back towards that center. As long as these moments cross at the same place, they don't need to go to the end. Just getting close to a triangle shape on each side, leveraging that practice of control of the hand with the breath, with the eye, with the mind. The act of drawing the expression through technique requires some practice, the many building up the field, each an opportunity to explore that practice, to take a moment with the breath, establish position and to try to connect the variability, the randomness or arbitrariness of angles, really exercising the hand, eye, pen connection, changing postures, a space for us to notice, to feel the effects of different directionality to open up from our maybe standard or base position. The practice is in the repetition, the subtle variations, the awareness of the effects of those variations becoming part of our mindful space. And this can extend to many things, practicing sport, practicing drawing, practicing writing, playing and testing, building up agility, endurance, both internal and external, part of the body, part of the mind. And as we connect these endpoints to vanishing points, these heights crossing a horizon to the field of view as it stand, extends into projection, perspective, the page becomes directed the early arbitraries making new patterns new overlaps perhaps we begin to see new patterns with the eyes doing their job processing what they take in trying to make sense of it in some way now just Flocks of birds or schools of fish moving, the many coming either together or in random. As we move to the next phase of giving shape to the height, giving delineation, limits to the projection, more and more space will emerge. You don't have to finish them all at any one time, so I think I'll leave a few for later to play within and just move to the new technique for a little while, see what starts to happen. We're entering into the more exploratory phase now that we've used 
a presence to establish, collection to work with, taking a height that draws your attention, perhaps reinforcing it with a few layers of line to make it stand out, and then tracking along just for a little ways on one of the outer edges of the diamond, extending roughly perpendicular across the horizon again, stopping on the other side of the shape, connecting around to make that slightly distorted square or rectangle, repeating it on the other side as far or as near as you want to take it, just changing the perceived side or size of that box. Going over them a few times, or maybe we'll switch to a heavier pen just to help them stand out to whichever you have handy. It doesn't matter too much. We start to get that emergence of the corner, a box or a house relative to our eye level at the horizon. We can take each one for a few minutes and just explore that connecting across vanishing lines, connecting along vanishing lines, and beginning to see a simulation of something 3D. And take this time in, in quiet just to draw into that space find the forms and figures there. Once the construction system is in place, we have these moving, you know, rotating shapes taken in only their local context. Each one gives us a couple of sides of something to experiment with, to play around with the structure, following the same rules. Anything coming from the vanishing lines can form a new skewed rectangle trapezoid there on the page, anything going across the paper can form an internal or external extension, giving that perception of depth, a simulation of something a little bit three-dimensional, like a window, a door, cut into a box, a hole. And if we bring a little bit of shading just to distinguish one surface from another, slightly lighter, slightly darker, depending on the environment, things will pop a little bit out into the 3D space, but that's just part of the platform set up in the drawing now that we could take further and further to explore, develop an idea within the drawing space. Use these basic fundamentals of construction developed over centuries to start to tell a story, to see a story, or just make that collection of moving objects, some ahead or overlapping, some behind, and see what we find within the field. Feel free to continue drawing, connecting edges, We're coming towards the close of the exercise. A few deep breaths to come back into our body, come back into our space. 
to transition, pull us away from that desire to keep completing, keep adding, keep finishing for a moment. You can always come back, but a break is good. Closing the eyes, putting down the pencil, going through the steps of transitioning from one thing to another. Replenishing the lungs, replenishing the joints, a little rolling of the shoulders. And just a little movement, loosen things up in the neck and the head and the arms, whatever feels comfortable. Take in what you've made, many lines beginning to form their own pattern and narrative and see what you'll do for the rest of the day. The drawing that emerged there on the page from an original distribution of lines, something arbitrary, unique to this context, this moment, something driven by ourselves, by our breath, by our internal finding of center, that horizon establishing our vision, but allowing it to be free, unbound, by the rules, the perspective, the rules of how we see, unbound by a predefinition of the technique to make something new, something interesting. This I see as my way of thinking, right? Something in there, the jumble, the tumble, the reorientation, trying to look at things always with a little bit of an angle, see what they are, understand them, ask questions. It can happen by developing something in a slightly oblique way, just a little off kilter from what we might be used to. If you like the exercises here, you can check out many more on the channel. Give this one a thumbs up and share with your friends. Leave a comment. Let me know what you found in the tumbling, rolling perspectives and come back every week here on YouTube on Wednesday mornings. There's generally a new episode. I hope your journey for the rest of the day can carry with it some of that mindfulness, the established practice, the creativity that might emerge, or just the flow of connecting your actions with your breath to be present, be there with everything you're doing so you can give it your best. I thank you all for joining. This is Rooks is Fun signing off. Draw well. <laughs>